In this video, I'm going to talk about the accounting for operating leases. If you watched the a video on the accounting for finance leases, uh, it may help you to contrast as we go along. So the first thing is this. Let's, let's go back to the introduction video, uh, what I presented in the introduction video of leases. There are some tests that the leasee must um, look at in order to determine whether they have a finance lease or an operating lease. And the idea is this, if you have a non-cancelable lease contract and one out of these five are met, then we would classify that lease as a finance lease and there's specific accounting related to that. Now, if none of these tests are met, then it defaults to operating lease. Okay, and it's still going to be recorded as an asset and liability on the balance sheet. But the uh, accounting for the expenses, the amortization expense and the interest expense is a little bit different than the finance lease. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. So if you have failed to meet the criteria for a finance lease, then uh, by default, it's going to go to an operating lease. And how does the lease C account for that? Well, if you uh, looked at, if you watched the video on finance leases, this was the explanation I gave uh, as to what X amount would be. Okay, X is, the, is what you would capitalize for the right of use asset, and X is also the amount of the liability that you have to recognize in your books. This is the leasee under a finance lease. Okay, so don't get confused. I'm, I'm gonna be describing the operating lease, but the thing is that there's some similarities between the operating lease and the finance lease as it, re as it relates to the initial journal entries. So technically, this part right here is just the same. You will have the present value for the operating lease. You'll have the present value of the payments Y. You'll have the present value of any B amount that you think you'll owe from the fact that you guaranteed the residual value. And then if there's a bargain, uh, well, in this case, in the operating lease, there would not be a bargain purchase option. But uh, just because of the fact that if it, there were a bargain purchase option, it would make it a finance lease. But the idea is that whatever that calculation is for the finance lease, it's going to be the same thing. You're going to get the present value of those payments and the present value of any amounts that you owe. And that will become the right of use asset in amount X and the lease liability in amount X as well. Okay, and then your payment, whatever that is, according to the contract, that's the cash payment that you're going to make under the lease contract. So that we're going to call Y amount, and that's not going to change, all right? That's always going to be the same right there. Now, what does change is at the end of the year, we're going to amortize the right of use asset, and we're going to calculate an interest expense for the liability, but we're going to bulk it all together into something called lease expense. So let me contrast real quickly with what we did under the finance lease arrangement. Under the finance, finance lease arrangement, we, we create an amortization schedule and we determine what the interest expense is each period and we account for it as such, as interest expense. We also amortize that asset over its uh, lease term or over the economic life if there's a bargain purchase option but whatever that is that's sort of the depreciation if you want to think of it that way or the amortization on that asset so we had a separate interest expense and we had separate amortization expense under the finance lease okay that's no longer the case under the operating lease we're going to grab those two values and we're going to put them into lease expense now Here's where it gets a little bit tricky. If you have an operating lease, the amount that you expense every period, and we're gonna call that amount C, is gonna be the same. It never changes per period, okay? Whereas under the capital lease, the total of interest expense plus amortization expense, the total that can vary during uh, each period because of the fact that the carrying value of the loan is going down. Now. For purposes of an operating lease, we're not going to allow that to vary. So what you do is you're going to do your regular amortization schedule as well, so you can compute the actual uh, lease liability. 
And then you're going to record a lease expense based on another amortization schedule that you would call the lease expense amortization schedule. But the idea is it's, it's some number that will make this be even per period. So the plug figure ends up being the amortization amount. So instead of you actually calculating an amortization for that right of use asset every period using straight line uh, or something like that, you would just allow it to be a plug with the intent that the debit to lease expense is equal the same amount. All right. Now, let me make this, let me simplify this because I know it's a lot. Normally, normally this lease expense amount, the, y, the C here is going to be the Y amount. It's whatever the cash payment you make. So whatever Y is, that's normally what the lease expense is going to be. And then you put that in there as your Y amount. You calculate the interest for the period. You put it as Z, right? And then you allow this to be a plug figure. So this Z uh, is the same Z that we calculated here in this amortization schedule. So the interest, the Z amount of interest is still the same as it was for the finance lease. But the amortization of the right of use assets is no longer going to be A. It's going to be some different amount, and that different amount will vary depending on uh, what we need so that lease expense is equal every period. All right? Now, here's the only thing that makes it a little bit quirky. So while this amount is normally Y, if the leasee has paid any additional direct costs, okay, these could be any type of cost uh, upon the inception of the lease, right? You, you, not only do you have to pay the monthly amount of Y, but the leasee had to pay some incidental costs, then the lease expense, all right, and I know this seems very mathematical, the lease expense is going to be the Y amount, just like before, plus an equal amount per period of whatever that direct cost is, it was, was that the lease he paid. So in other words, let me just give you an example real quick. Assume that we pay $200 per month for this lease. If that's the case, the lease expense is going to be $200 per month. All right? And then you do these two based on the amortization schedule here, and then this is a plug. But this always remains $200 per month. But if in, in the lease is maybe three years, let's say. But if for some reason I had to pay additional direct costs, not, ju not just the $200, if maybe I paid 30 bucks extra at the beginning of the lease, $30 over a three year span, then I would have 200 here plus one third, because it's three year lease, one third of the 30 bucks. So in other words, it would just make my lease expense 210 per period. And what I'm referring to is that extra direct cost that I might have to pay besides the Y amount. So if you, if, if you don't have any additional complications, this lease expense is always going to be Y. All right. But if you have that extra amount that you pay up front somewhere uh, in, uh, as part of the transaction, then just get that amount, the 30 bucks, and divide it by the number of periods in the lease. And then add that. And that's your lease expense. And then this is the plug figure. Okay. I know it's a little quirky, but that's the idea. The, the, the thought is, if this is an operating lease, then the rental payment expense, the rental expense incurred per period is equal. And that's what we're trying to do there. Now, from the perspective of the lease order, this is an operating lease. No sale has occurred uh, because it is an operating lease, so no revenue or cost of goods sold is recognized. So from the perspective of the lease or, they just get a payment of Y amount on the first day on January 1st, X1. So cash is debited, and since they have not earned that revenue, they classify it as unearned revenue. As time passes on December 31st, then they can reverse out that Y amount and recognize revenue for the amount earned. And again, this doesn't have to be once per year. You know, the the uh, uh, the recognition of revenue can occur monthly, quarterly, whatever. I'm just simplifying here and saying that it's once per year. And then since the lease source still has the asset in their books, they're going to depreciate that asset in the amount of I, whatever that is, 
based on whatever depreciation method they have. Okay? Now, this is pretty interesting because now we have a scenario where two companies are accounting for that asset. Okay, because the leasee has a right of use asset in their books, and the lease source still re retains the asset in their books as well. And then at the end, the leasee amortizes some amount D, and the lease source depreciates some amount I. So you know it's kind of interesting because now you're having both of both parties uh, depreciate and amortize that same asset. Whereas if you compare to the finance lease, only the leasee is accounting for that amortization of the asset. Since the leasor under a finance lease, since the leasor removed that item from their books, they no longer do depreciation for it. Okay? So hopefully this uh, contrasting uh, between the finance lease and the operating lease can help you in understanding the mechanics in, or the accounting behind uh, uh, these transactions. Also look at the video for an example so that I can tie in how these letters uh, would look like under uh, an exercise.